The Vivo V11 Pro is now official in India and perhaps for the first time Vivo has kept the pricing this aggressive for a mid-range V-series phone. There's a lot to look forward to about the Vivo V11 Pro including its trendy dewdrop notch, which by the way we might soon see on the OnePlus 60 as well, and the powerful Snapdragon 660 mobile platform. However, with the likes of Poco F and around, the competition is certainly relentless. Can the Vivo V11 Pro match up? Well, we have been putting the phone through its spaces for quite a while now and let's answer all your Vivo 11 related doubts and queries in a detailed review that follows. <music> to be honest, we switched to the Vivo 11 Pro from the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and the handset felt rather compact at the start. From a fresh perspective too, the Vivo 11 Pro should still strike as surprisingly manageable for a phone with a large 6.4 inch screen. With the Vivo V11 Pro, Vivo further refines the design that we earlier saw on phones like the Vivo V9 and on the Vivo X21. Our unit has the subtle rose gold shade that looks awesome. The curves on the glass finish back, which is actually made of plastic, further ensure that the phone is comfortable to operate. The side frame that has all the buttons and all the ports is actually made of metal. On the front, the bottom bezels are even narrower and the new water drop notch at the top leaves almost all of the status bar for use. For a phone that aims to keep up with the modern trends, however, the use of a regular micro USB Type-A port feels like an oversight. All said and done, the Vivo VLAN Pro is quite elegant and quite comfortable to operate. The Vivo VLAN Pro has a good quality 6.4 inch AMOLED screen with 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio and Full HD Plus resolution. Colors pop nicely and don't feel unnaturally oversaturated. And being an AMOLED panel, the contrast is excellent. The maximum brightness isn't at par with what you get on high-end flagships, but it, that would be nitpicking at this price point, and outdoor visibility is just fine. By default, the whites were a tad bluish, but that is something that you can fix using the color temperature adjustment toggle under display settings. Another feature that adds value is the very customizable always on mode. This also an eye protection mode that you can use while reading. The water drop notch allows you even pro to retain most of the status bar and in our personal opinion it works better than a wide notch. We wouldn't necessarily prefer it over a notchless phone with minimal bezels up top to accommodate necessary components but yeah if you have to have a notch the Vivo V11 Pro's water drop notch entails minimum compromises. Another interesting feature of the Vivo V11 Pro is its in-display fingerprint sensor. Unlocking the Vivo V11 Pro is hardly any botheration. That's because it innovatively combines face unlock and in-display fingerprint sensor while unlocking. Vivo says its fourth generation in-display fingerprint sensor is faster and more reliable, but the difference isn't all that noticeable. The accuracy and consistency still can't match what you get with regular capacitive fingerprint sensors. The face unlock is super fast and is also aided by an IR laser, which means that it works absolutely well in pitch dark ambience. But as soon as you place your finger on the display, the face unlock also triggers simultaneously and your phone will unlock with whichever is faster and that's face unlock more often than not. This is certainly cool, but if you don't wish to use both unlock mechanisms simultaneously, you can always turn off combined face unlock from settings. The face unlock consistency and performance is very impressive. We can't vouch for exactly how secure the face unlock is, but it doesn't work when your eyes are closed or when you're looking away or for when you're wearing a helmet, and that should be good enough for most of us. Talking about the performance, this Octa-Core Snapdragon 660 powered phone runs extremely smooth. With no problems playing demanding games or gunning our way through to the chicken dinner, day-to-day -day performance and multitasking feels flawless too. RAM management isn't overly excessive and the mobile platform also supports 2018 essentials like say dual 4G Volte. We have the 6GB RAM and 64GB storage variant with us and around 50GB storage is free at the user end. The phone also has a dedicated card slot if you wish to add more of secondary storage. The software is Android 8.1 Oreo based Funtouch OS. This time, Vivo has also added a few new features like the Paytm payment shortcut in the notification shade, the Jovi Assistant and its feed, a new icon pack, etc. Vivo software is well optimized and feature rich and lets you customize aesthetics according to your will, but it's way too close to iOS and that kind of gets jarring. The first thing we did was change the app launcher and the keyboard. 
the Vivo 11 Pro also doesn't have DRML1 wideband certificate for HD streaming on Netflix and on Amazon Prime. Pre-install software and third-party bloatware is minimal. It must also be mentioned that the software is one area where Vivo v Pro has a massive room for improvement. Now let's talk about the cameras. The Vivo v Pro has the same set of cameras as on the Vivo X21 and though we haven't tested both phones side by side, we have an inkling that the camera performance has marginally improved. What we can confidently say is that the Vivo v Pro certainly has one of the best cameras in its price. Talking about the specifications, there's a 12 megapixel primary rear camera with f1.8 aperture, PDAF large size pixels, and it's aided by a 5 megapixel depth sensor with f2.4 aperture lens. On the front, there's a 25 megapixel selfie camera that's housed within the notch. There's no shutter lag on the rear camera, images shot outdoors show vivid colors, rich details, and wide dynamic range. Talking about the low light performance, it's also pretty impressive. You get rich colors, abundant details, and very little noise. The camera can focus on close objects without much trouble. As for the portrait mode, the Vivo v Pro hasn't got the best one, but it's still quite good. The edge detection can be fuzzy at times, but the quality of the blur is well balanced. In low light, the camera performance doesn't deteriorate much the camera app is also rich in features like AI beautification, portrait lighting, pro mode and many more that you'd really use. All said and done, we are quite happy with the Vivo e Pro camera and in our opinion, for still photography, it's better than what we get on the Poco F1. Another crucial aspect that we haven't touched upon yet is the battery. The Vivo e Pro has a 3400 mAh battery and the resulting backup is pretty impressive. In our extensive usage, we rarely had to worry about running out of charge. On particular heavy usage days, the kind that when we attend outdoor events, we could still hit bedtime with around 20-30% to 30 remaining. Of course, the dual engine fast charging plays its part too. It can deplete battery juices pretty quickly. Talking about the audio, the mono speaker at the bottom is quite loud. The audio quality is about average. The audio quality via headphones it is pretty decent too. And speaking of which, Vivo also bundles a basic pair in the box. To sum it all up, we can conclude that the Vivo v Pro is an excellent mid-range option. The phone passes on whatever was good with the Vivo X21 at a significantly lower price point. The handset looks elegant, has a good quality AMOLED screen, offers dependable performance and has a long-lasting battery. What further helps its case is its camera performance. The rear cameras and also the front cameras are actually very impressive. Compared to the Poco F1, the V11 Pro has slightly weaker chipset but it offers a better display, better design and better cameras. The base variant of the Poco F1 is cheaper but if you have a budget of around 25k, you must take a long and hard look at Vivo v Pro before you decide. To round things up, pros include excellent display, excellent design, in-display fingerprint sensor, fast face unlock, camera performance, a dedicated card slot, and also dual 4G VoLTE support. As for cons, the software design needs some work, there's no USB Type-C port on the phone, and missing HD streaming issue needs to be fixed.